Okay, hello Polaris Ranger fans. This is the EV. I'm at about 120 hours. Haven't done maintenance uh, video in a while, so I thought I would show you this one because this one's important. Uh, one of the problems I've had recently, well I've had a lot of issue with these uh, terminals on the battery getting corroded and stuff, and that's pretty uh, common. So, uh, I'm actually getting ready to bring these uh, batteries out of here and clean all this up. If you look down here, I don't even know how, how good I can get this on video, but like there's a spot. You can see the rust. You can see rust and stuff up underneath these trays where these batteries are is getting a lot of rust, which is uh, the problem has really been is the overcharging of the batteries. Now, these uh, chargers on these things you can change the logarithm and change to different uh, settings. Charging logarithms is what they call it. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I changed mine. And the standard setting on this is a 2010 model. The standard setting that it came on was 73, and I changed it to 71, which is uh, supposed to keep a uh, lot slower charging, keep from boiling these batteries out. Because that's what's been happening. Now I'm going to add water constantly and water and then it's corroding my terminals because it's overcharging. You can kind of see from the tops of the batteries that uh, it's been uh, getting a lot of uh, acid boiling out. So that's been my problem. So the way you do this, change this uh, charging logarithm, is you pull this master uh, power connector here, which is this one right here. Now, both of these, this is a 48 volt connection back here on your solenoid. And both of those at the same potential, they just hook to the battery. So, you pull this connection and you can see, let me just pull this off right here. You see what I did is I just made a little jumper with a piece of copper wire and plugged uh, two male just pop that. There you go. So you can see what I mean. So I just made a little male connector to plug into these connections right here. And then I took uh, my uh, jumper. This is just a jumper wire that I made. And everybody should have one of these. You can see what I've got here is just a piece of zip cord with some uh, little alligator clips on the end. And I've got one marked. Uh, so if I'm working on something uh, battery, that would be my negative. Uh, usually I just put a black uh, one on here for negative and then the other one is positive. That way when I get to the other end of my jumpers I've got the same thing. I've got that on the negative side so I can keep track of which one's which. In this jumper uh, wire set I've got here I've just had laying around. I use it to uh, it for years and uh, you know when you work on cars you tend to need that. So what I'm really doing, the whole gist of this, what it boils down to is that you're breaking this connection and then you need to make and basically connect these wires back together but you need to be able to do it from up front where the charger is so you separate this and then I use a little jumper put my connector on there and then on the other end I'm connecting the other two ends and basically it's like plugging this plug together and separating this plug back apart which is putting 48 volts back up through these wires because that's what this connector is. It just connects to the battery. Uh, I think that's the positive side. But either way, I'm just basically making and breaking this connection. That's all that's really happening down here on this end. So we go to the other end. And what you're looking at is over here on the charger, you're looking at this red one right there on top. And I'll just plug this in so you can see it. Plug it in real quick and you can kind of see what it does. Now, by the way, all you really need to do, you kind of see how I pulled my uh, connector out here where you, I can just sit here on a chair and then I can reach it because it's just in the glove box there. So I just pull it out where I can get to it. And then you bring your uh, extension cord over here and then you can just plug it in right here while you're sitting here, which is what you need to be able to do. And when you plug it in, you see the flashing. And then you'll see, right there, you see, you count those blinks, the ones on top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a one, one, two, and then it'll go through a basically routine, 
and then uh, it'll actually give you error because I'm disconnected on the other end. But if you're connected, it'll just go ahead. It'll show you what. Uh, basically, it's showing you what the logarithm: seven flashes and then a one. Now originally it did seven flashes and a three. So it just flashes seven times, a little pause, three more times, and that tells you what the charging a logarithm in the charger is. So that's what you're looking for. So what you do is you plug uh, this cord in, back up. So you just make your connection. When you see it go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, then what I've got right here, here's my other end. I just uh, basically just clip one to the plastic here and then you touch these two. When you touch these two, it's just like putting that plug together on the other end. When you push this together, put your wires back together, what it will do is it'll, uh, you hold that for three seconds, you put it together, hold it for three seconds, and then that will change to the next logarithm over there. So then it'll go, I went through about five or maybe six different uh, changes on those uh, logarithms. I had like a 42, I think, and a 46, and a uh, 50, it had a 52 maybe. I, I can't remember all the ones it had, but it had about five different logarithms before I got to the 71. So it started with like a, uh, I think it started with 11. So it started with a one, and then a one, and then it went uh, two and two, which is 22, uh, and then it went, uh, I don't know, I don't know how many it did. And then it did a 30 something, and then a 40, it did a couple 40s, and it did a 50, and then finally it did a, a 71. And then when it did seven blinks, and then one blink, then that tells you that that's 71. So when you see that, and it'll do it uh, two or three times before it goes to the next one. So when you see it do 71, then what you do is you touch these back together for 10 seconds. And then you'll hear it click. And when it clicks, that saves that uh, a logarithm to the charger. And then the next time you uh, turn your, uh, plug it in, or you turn your uh, EV on, it's uh, at that charge rate of 71, which is a much slower charging, and then it keeps from uh, balling these uh, batteries. So all we're really doing is I'm just bypassing that little connector over there with this jumper wire. And that's about all it amounts to. And then I hooked a one spade, which just gives me 48 uh, volts right off that terminal because uh, that's what that hooks to. It hooks right there to the top of the solenoid. And that, by the way, is your charger. The wire uh, that I fixed before, and I'll kind of glance at that since we're standing here. Here's my uh, charging wire that I had to repair right there. Basically, what I did is I just ran in a... Uh, the 48 volt wire that charges the batteries comes right off the bottom of this connector down here and mine burn up. So I just bypassed it inside and uh, I've got a video on that as well. That wire is this wire right here. It just runs through, goes back, goes back to the battery and charges, uh, charges your batteries. And then this other wire on here is at the same potential. It goes into the system. It probably goes right over here to the uh, controller I, I would guess it actually says I think it says it goes into a splice really all the splice is is what you see right here it's a bunch of wires that come together into one connector that's what they call a splice so somewhere you have uh, about four or five 48 volt wires that come together into one terminal I don't even know where it is <clears throat> but it's up in here up in this harness somewhere maybe somebody will show us that but at any rate, my batteries are all over boiling, so I changed to the 71 a logarithm. Next thing uh, you can see on my rust down in there, I have to pull these batteries out. That'll be a lot of fun, and uh, I don't think it's too bad. I think you just pull these side panels. Maybe this back one comes off real easy, and then you can work on those batteries, pull your connections. Just take some good pictures beforehand so you don't mess up putting everything back together. And then uh, I'm going to pull those trays off the bottom and take them and get them powder coated. Make sure my frame, in case my frame might need a little paint on it here or there, I might have to uh, put a little paint on that to keep it from being corroded. Put it back together. I may, uh, may end up just putting some new batteries in here. I haven't decided yet. So changing the logarithm, though, is a good first step. Uh, at least what you can do is you can check and see what your logarithm is. 
if it's uh, set to 73 <clears throat> then uh, definitely you'll want to charge it change it to 71 or something some people change to 11 but uh, I'm gonna try the 71 and all you really need to do is just open your hood, connect your charger, and then look up in there and see what it says on uh, blinking on the side. If it's, if it's blinking 71, then that's what you're on. If it's blinking 73, then you should probably change it. So it's not too hard. You just need a little jumper wire. And you can just sit right here. But you got to be right here. So that's why you need the jumper coming over here because you can't walk over there, connect, reconnect, walk back. It takes too long. So, uh, simple little alligator cables and little pieces of zip cord. <coughs> Real easy to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, that's uh, my basic uh, maintenance. I really haven't had any other problems with the EV. Uh, we use it pretty much every day out here doing plants and stuff. So, we're getting ready to put a lot of use on it. Still running my uh, original tires, and uh, man, they hardly even worn. Other than a little dirt, uh, well, yeah, I really uh, like, uh, like I said before, maybe a little bit better parking brake. I've adjusted mine, but it only does so good. And I'm on a steep hill, so a little bit better parking brake would be a nice thing. But other than that, uh, really haven't had any problem with it. I might do a couple things later on, but. Uh, it's really working good. All that's really happened, uh, major. Oh, and some people did mention one thing, and I did notice this, even on mine. I don't really know. Yeah, I guess I can see it. You can see it right there. You can see that wiring harness, how it's wearing a little clean spot. That's your uh, steering shaft. It, that's your main wiring harness running down. That comes from up here. And it goes behind that steering shaft and it's really kind of tight right there and some people have said that that uh, shaft has worked through, worn through their uh, wiring and shorted stuff out I don't know, it's, it is tight, I've reached down there, it's pretty darn tight I could see how it could eventually wear through that not easy to get out of there I've been looking at that thinking uh, maybe it looks like you can get that shaft loose uh, right down there. Maybe pull that shaft loose and get that wire, or work that wrap, wire around to the other side and then tie it back up to here. Keep it away so it's not touching anything. That might be a smart thing to do. Mine doesn't look that bad. You really uh, don't have that many hours, but if you got three or 400 hours on this thing, maybe uh, by that time you're uh, wearing through that. I don't know. So... Uh, other than that, I can't say I've had any real problem with it. Like I said, my tires are good. The only thing I've noticed is that the clutch, you've got a little clutch in there. <clears throat> uh, you've got, I guess, two of them. You've got one in the front, too. <clears throat> and it's like a ball bearing clutch that cl clicks in on demand for the uh, all-wheel drive. It's inside that case right there. <clears throat> and those things are noisy. They uh, rattle a lot and uh, just kind of make racket but uh, they function I haven't uh, see a problem with the functionality but it does uh, rattle around and make some noise which is kind of annoying considering the rest of the time the thing's pretty solid it's hard to beat I had a lot of people in this thing they're really amazed at how strong it runs but uh, you can see it carry a lot of dirt and rocks and junk because that's uh, pretty normal around here all right, that's all I got to report for uh, 122 hours. That's not much for 2010, but at least uh, it has been working, and we're very well pleased. Just one burnt wire, change the charging profile, and hopefully that'll stop this uh, burning these batteries up. And then when I get around to, to changing the batteries, we'll do a good video on that. So this is Branson Solar signing out. Thanks.